In this training video, we will review the loop control features found within Song Surgeon. And on the Song Surgeon interface, they're down here in the lower right hand corner. So let's begin at the beginning, as they say, and talk about how we set loops. And there are two ways to do it. The first is to put your mouse in this waveform area of the user interface and left click to set the beginning, slide your mouse to the right and right click and you will set up a looping area as you can see. Let's do it one more time and there you go. So that's the first way. The second way is by using this starting and ending buttons here which you can see on the user interface. So in this particular situation you would allow the song or the audio file to be playing and as it's playing and you hear approximately where you would like to start you click the start button and then as it continues to play and you hear the area where you like to set the ending loop you click the end button and that sets the end so I'll do that you can watch as I do it Catch a lie in action and it's sad but it's true we were just one big distraction and the nights they've been okay so you can see that I have now uh, created a third looping area on Song Surgeon by using these starting and ending buttons and of course once you have these loops set um, you can always grab a hold of them by clicking on them with your left mouse and then you can drag them to the right or the left so you can more precisely set where you want them. You can do the same with the beginning or the ending loop points. So once we have them set another question becomes well how do we delete them and again there are two ways to do that. Number one is to have this white progress indicator um, within a looping area this green shaded area that's bounded by the green and the red endpoints and when it is within that if you hit the delete button down here it will delete the loop so that's one way a second way is if you simply hover your mouse over the beginning loop point right click it and then select delete and it will then remove that particular looping area so those are the two ways in which you can delete loops next let's talk about applying effects to these loops. How do you do that? Well, you have to select a loop in order to apply an effect to the loop and you select it by simply having this progress indicator, this white progress indicator within any one of the loops. And when you do, you can then apply tempo, you could apply pitch change, you could apply vocal reduction, and you could also apply EQ and all of those effects would be applied only to this area that is contained within the loop. Everything outside of it and the areas that are not bounded by loop points as well as the other looping areas would not use the same settings that you've applied to this. And then you can of course move to the next one and you can apply different settings. We can apply 20 here. We can go to the third and we can apply you know something else. But the point is that these looping areas isolate this part of the file and it allows you to not only play it repetitively but it allows you to apply these effects only to that area that you've isolated. Next then let's talk about how we move between looping areas set up on the screen and we've got two sets of buttons here they're in the center of this um, loop controls area and the first set of buttons at the top the left and the right arrow only work within an existing looping area. So if I want to jump to the beginning, I click the back. If I want to jump to the end, I click the forward. And it will not move outside of that area. Now, the bottom set of buttons do a little more than that, which simply means to say that they will actually jump between loops. So the top jump within the loop and the bottom jump between loops. So if I click the back button, it jumps back to the beginning of the loop, click it again, jumps back to the beginning of the loop before it, click it again, it jumps back to the beginning of the loop before that. And of course if I click the forward button you'll see that it jumps forward each time. So that is the functionality of these buttons that you find in the middle. The next thing I'd like to briefly cover because it won't take long is this new functionality found in version 4 which is an LB which stands for loop bypass. When the loop bypass is off that means that the loops that you see on the screen are active and all the settings that you've applied to them are in effect. If you toggle this from off to on you can see that the first thing that 
happens when you toggle it on is that the bypass is on and as a result we've removed the shading to help remind you that that bypass is on. And when the bypass is on essentially what Song Surgeon does is it ignores these loops as if they're not there. So not only does it not repeat but the particular settings that you've applied to those loops will also not be in effect. And so that allows you to you know, play the song completely through without hitting any looping areas and playing repetitively. And of course, when you want to have the loops in effect again, you just toggle this loop bypass back off and the loops go back into effect. Next, let's look at the edit button within the looping area of Song Surgeon. And to have the edit button work, you again need to be within an existing loop. So if we go inside of loop two, and we click the edit button, it opens this dialog, which is an edit loop dialog. And let's just walk through real quickly what it is that's going on here. First of all, the L2 at the top is what you see here, and you could edit that. You could put in loop 2, you could spell it out. Gives you the ability to have this particular loop bypassed and no other loops. It would allow you to actually adjust the start and the ending point of this loop in seconds. Uh, in ten thousandths of seconds. It will also allow you to adjust the key, pitch, or tempo in this case, and it also shows us that the current setting on the tempo is 20 percent. shows us that the pitch is 0.00, .00 which means to say that the pitch has not been changed. EQ, it shows us if there's any EQ applied. And vocal reduction, it shows us if there's any vocal reduction applied, and again zero means that there is not. And that moves us down here to the playback parameters area. And let's talk about each of these two things individually. First of all, loop count uh, means how many times does it loop? A minus one means that it will loop in an infinite number of times. Um, so it will loop continuously until you stop it. If you change this to one or five or 15, 15 means it will loop 15 times and then it will break out of the loop and continue to play the rest of the file. So you can control the number of times that it actually loops. And the delay setting tells us about what happens when the progress indicator, this white line, hits the end of the looping area. What does it do? What 5 would tell it to do is it says hit the end, stop or pause or delay for 5 seconds before jumping back to the beginning and looping. So if I have zero in here, which is the default, it will loop continuously with no delay at the end. It will jump immediately back to the beginning and start replaying again. But if I put five or 10 or some other number in there, it will delay that number of seconds before it actually jumps back to the beginning and continues to loop. The bottom section, the speed trainer, is something new and something that I want to go into in a little more detail. So we will cover that in the next training video. With that, we're going to conclude this training video on the looping controls area found in Song Surgeon version 4.